As people, we like to be able to move, to think, to grow, and to be healthy. For us to do this, we depend on ourselves to be healthy and to form the right shapes and structures so that they function properly. In this video, I want to show you how we have asked very fundamental questions about how cells establish and maintain proper shapes so that they can get their jobs done right. We have then started using this information to gain insight into a deadly disease, specifically pancreatic cancer, which claims approximately 95% of its victims. To ask our basic questions, we needed a simple process where cells are quickly changing their shapes. Dictyostelia are single-celled amoebas that undergo cell division in a manner similar to human cells. The red structure is called the mitotic spindle and separates the genetic material into the two halves of the cell. The green signal is the protein myosin 2, which is found throughout the skin of the cell and concentrates in the cleavage furrow, where the cell's skin squeezes together until the cell divides in two. Using a high-powered microscope, you can see the cleavage furrow within a slice of the dividing cell skin. The yellow structures are special fibers called actin fibers, which provide structure to the cell skin. The outermost layer of the cell skin is the plasma membrane. Beneath it, you can see some of the substructures, or organelles, within the body of the cell. Embedded within this meshwork of actin fibers are fibers made from the protein myosin-2. You can see them wiggling in the cell skin. Myosin-2 uses energy to do mechanical work, just as a workman pauses for a drink so that he has the energy he needs to keep on working. In much the same way, myosin-2 uses energy to do the work of pinching the cell's skin together to divide the cell as it's doing in the stichiostelium cell. Applying these kinds of ideas, we can explain how a cell divides, but also more complicated cell behaviors, like how one cell can eat another. Cell cannibalism usually happens when two cells come together and stick to each other. Then the softer of the two wraps around the stiffer one and generally ends up killing it. This is one of the ways cancer destroys our bodies because tumor cells are often softer than healthy cells and cannibalize them easily. Now, cells live in a rough neighborhood where they're constantly being pulled on, pushed around, and squeezed. The cell must sense and respond properly to these mechanical forces. Otherwise, it can be derailed from its normal business. For example, maybe the cell fails to divide properly. We mimic some of these forces by sucking on the surface of a cell with a miniature straw called a micropipette. Where the cell's skin puckered, proteins like myosin-2 accumulated. The cell then pulled back against the suction, escaping the straw and continuing its normal business, in this case, cell division. We continue to use experiments like these to identify a whole host of proteins that the cell uses to respond to forces pushing and pulling on it. And we hypothesize that one way a cell could become soft and aggressive like tumor cells is by overreacting to shape disturbances. This idea was confirmed when we found that many of the proteins that respond to forces on the cell are more abundant in pancreatic cancer. Here is a human pancreas. Zooming in, we looked for one of the proteins that is super responsive to mechanical forces. In a normal, healthy pancreas, there's very little of the protein present. But if we look at a cancerous pancreas, we find that much more of the protein is present even in the earliest stages of cancer. We now consider this protein and others like it to be potential targets for future anti-cancer drugs. In fact, we found a molecule called 4-HAP that works on one of these proteins and we're already testing its ability to fight cancer. When we add 4-HAP to a cell, its myosin-2 fibers rearrange and increase in the cell's skin. Because the myosin-2 pulls on the actin fibers, the cell stiffens. 4-HAP does the same thing to cancer cells, making them stiffer and more like their healthy counterparts. This is very exciting because I've shown you how we can go from asking very basic questions about how cells work to the point where we are testing a small molecule that has potential for helping treat a terrible disease.